using all of his knowledge from the Marine Corps, all of his knowledge from you know the regular school system, achieving doctorates, PhDs, you name it. You know, I think he has probably more education than than most people I could ever even imagine of dealing and working with. Um, but outside of all of that, you know, he's still just a regular guy. You know, a regular guy who cares about his family, who cares about his friends, but most importantly, he is an individual, you know, who wants to help as many people as he possibly can. And I know for sure that the message he's about to share today is gonna help each and every one of us. So again, I'm hoping that he is ready to hop online, you know, because we are all ready to hear from him. It's five after. So if you're there, Dr. Obama Baum, we're ready to turn it over to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vinny. I so appreciate you. So I'm going to work on slowing it down. Those of you who know me, that probably won't last too long. So, uh-oh. What's going on? Where's that coming from? Hold on a second. Something is going on in the background. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. I don't know what's going on. Playing in my background. Hold on. We can hear you and see you perfectly. <laughs> no, but something is playing in my background here. Like, where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? Hold on, guys. I don't know. No. Where's that coming from? <laughs> where's that coming from? I don't know. Somebody's playing something of mine. Uh oh. Let me check on here. Who's doing what? Wait, let me take off share. You guys can't hear that noise? No, I can't there. hear it. So you can just talk. Yeah, I can just talk. That's okay, but I'm, just it. I'm hearing my voice. Somebody's playing something. No, you are something. I don't know. Guys, give us one minute here. I don't know where that's in the world that's coming from. Zoom. No, that's my. This is awesome. I love it. That one. Is this? So here's what's going on. I'll tell you guys right now. Somebody is playing a recording of. On his computer. It's the only one that can. Right. So, um, Obi, can you minimize everything and go back to your desktop? There's possibly, uh, possibly that there's something playing on your desktop that you're not able yeah, to see. Hold on. Here's a, walk me through it, Annie. This is okay. so beautiful. All right. Um, so, um, let's go this through this. Fine. Can you go into your, okay. So can you close uh, your channel videos at the top there? Um, close there. down your, close down your fa Facebooks there for now. Because you've got three Facebooks open. Oh. Okay, and um, the other ones should be fine. You're not playing anything else in the background. Uh, you can probably turn your WhatsApp off for the presentation so that if any videos are auto playing from there, it's off. It's a Sarah Academy. Close the Sarah Academy. Huh. Yes, yes. Smart, smart. Smart Fasana. There you go. There we go. Do you see the little volume sign? Yeah, That's yeah. Going. It's right there. Yeah. Uh, it's done. Okay. You're so awesome. Thank you for teamwork helping. Teamwork makes a dream work. I'm like, where is my voice coming from? It's normally in my head, but now it's like on the computer. So <laughs> this is exciting because the next talk I'm going to talk about, this is how you work through it. It took us, what, 47 seconds. Good. We're still on track. So. Um, one of the things I do when I create anything else is always create chaos. And so we're going to talk about that in the end, right? So some chaos happened for myself. And what happened was, just so you guys know before we jump into today, is this. I just got off the, well, I would say phone, Zoom call with uh, three different people just back to back all morning long. Where's Andrea? Hi, Andrea. Right? One of the calls, Andrea jumped in on one of the calls and I'm going like, oh, this should have been a private link. And then, so it was like a perfect moment for what I would now call and refer to as Zoom bloopers, okay? So we had some awesome Zoom bloopers, having a meeting of people, but it was hilarious, right? So it was all good. But so thank you, Andrea, for bringing some love into my life. 
that actually just brings us into the first thing I'm going to talk about when we start talking today. So with all of that, before we jump in officially, if you're on Facebook and you just witnessed part of that craziness, welcome to the crazy house. We're about to go even crazier and it's going to be fun. But I would be remiss if I didn't say a few kind words about the gentleman, Mr. Vinnie Cochran, who introduced me here today. So in calming down so I can get on track with my message, because I was a little messed up, it's okay. <sighs> Vinnie Cochran has been a great mentor of mine for probably, I think about 16 years now. It's, it's been a while. And he spent 30 years of his life being a United States Marine. Being a Marine, we're one of the only tribes that's brainwashed this way to where once a Marine, always a Marine. You're never former Marine. You're always a Marine. And they don't, that does, doesn't come out of you. Why am I sharing that is because he's literally my favorite human being on the planet. And a lot of that has to do with some of my message today, right? So being my favorite human being on the planet, if you're asking like what has to qualify for that? Well, it's very simple. If you saved my life a few times, because I literally was going to, put a gun in my head and take me out of here. Some of you will get that later on. Because in the military, especially in the Marine Corps, when you're trained, my job as an infantry commander was really to basically do this. Take men into combat and bring them out alive, destroying the enemy, right? So the Marine Corps' mission for the infantry Marine is to locate, close with, and destroy the enemy by fire maneuver and Do that through close combat if necessary. That might not mean too much to you, but here's what it means in simple terms. We put you in a combat zone, you go find the enemy, well, you kill them. And when you're done, you come back home safe, you celebrate, and as we would say in the Marine Corps back in the days was, you go home and you date the prom queen and you have babies and you live a happy life. Hey, Back in the days with the um, nomads, they would take them and say, well, we're taking you to Valhalla. You know, the Vikings, everything they did was all in glorious combat. Same thing happened with the Spartans, the culture of war. We are presently right now in a state of war in this world happening right now. It's the world on what most people are, are trying to hold on to, and that's the past. The truth is, how we go into the future has to be a whole new mindset. Today's message is going to be a next level achievement. And I wanna share something with you here for you to understand, write this down, because there's a significant difference between success and achievement. So don't worry about what the dictionary says, here's what Dr. O says. See, success, is the process of achieving a goal. Achievement is the process by which you achieve goals. It is a constant, ever-growing state. It's a process of changing. It's the process of becoming. Every day as human beings, we are achieving. Now, the moment we get into the state of achievement, which means the constant growth, we will be met with resistance. That is a fact. It is a universal law. And when it comes to law, I don't break the laws. I break the rules. Every single one of them. Some of them, 10 times a day. Some of the best ones I'll break five times on Sunday. It's okay. But I don't break any of the laws. So. Today, I'm not going to teach you the law. So those of you who've been working with me, I'm, I may teach you one law, right? So here, here's one, the law of opposition, right? The law of opposition is, is, is a very important one because here's the deal. If you are in the process of achievement, because achievement is a, is a process and success is bumps in the roads. For example, if you were to drive from here to the state of New York, here being Atlanta, Georgia, to the state of New York, there's going to be a lot of stop signs and stop lights. Those are different things. So your achievement 
process is leaving here to go to New York, which is a big goal. But in between there, there are bumps along the way. There are stop signs along the way. There's little achievements along the way. Little successes that makes a difference, right? And here's my definition of success before we jump into the meat and potatoes of today. Oh, good. Oh, okay. So mine is, regardless of whatever happened, when you understand that achievement is then which a process, how do you show up to that process? Like this. You show up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time with desire and faith, willing to pay the price, finding others who pay the price with you, and eventually success will take, that, take its place for whatever the goal is that you set. So let me slow down and go back to that for you again. Number one, you have to understand this though. Success is the worthy progress, is the progression of a worthy ideal. Not idea, ideal. I'll give you that definition again because I saw Karen was going like this, right? But before that, I want you to understand what's my ultimate success? What's my ultimate goal? And those who know me know that. And thank you, Annie. Ninja, Ninja Move sent me a plot of land today to buy out in Ireland. So I was checking it out. Beautiful. It's so green. It's up like the, the huh. Because she knows my ultimate goal. And my ultimate goal requires that for me, $3 billion is nothing. That's 10% of my goal. $3 trillion is what's going to actualize that goal. So it takes a process to get there. And all the things that I do, all the businesses that I have, seven very successful businesses, an eighth now, which Ms. Fasano Patel, my CEO of Global Operations over there, and I launched last year. We grew that business alone by 335% within the first six months. That's a success. It's one of the bumps in the road, part of the entire process of achievement for my grand goal, which is only my own country, which I'm gonna create with over 10,000 homes on it. Nobody pays for anything there. See, there's different people in, in the world tried it, like Hitler tried it in Nazi Germany. He had a different idea about it. That's not me. In my country, everybody's gonna show up and live. You don't have to pay for nothing, I'll do it all. But here's the bottom line. There's a prerequisite to getting on, the, on, on there. Well, one of the citizens that's already on there is Vinnie Cochran. He has no, he doesn't have a choice. He's gonna help us lead the thing, okay? So his home's already done and paid for, we got you. But in order to do that, that's the reason I, I run several other successful business. And how all of this is gonna happen for me comes back to that definition, Karen. You, like, you ready for it? So you gotta write it down, slow down. Right? So everybody, if you're off camera, get on camera, we're gonna do a little exercise. Do this with me, go like this. So now I'm gonna calm down for you. Here's the definition. In order for all of that to happen for me, I have to show up consistently because showing up is 80% of success. Show up consistently. If you're not consistent, well, you know what happens. Nothing is going to happen. Every mother who's born a child was consistent for at least six to nine months. And that child was there. So show up consistently with a good attitude. You have a bad attitude? Well, guess what? Bad results will follow. Almost no goal will be accomplished. Your attitude determines your altitude. So show up consistently with a good attitude. If you've ever played a numbers game by letters, whereas A being one, B being two, three, all the way to 26, and you add up, if you spell the word attitude, it equals 100%. Now here's a couple of things, it's, it's kind of funny, but hard work is about 97%. Ass kisser is 98%. <laughs> so is the bullshitter. But your attitude, a good attitude, that's 100%. Now, show up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time. No great goal worth having will come easily. If you want it easy, easy as sleaze, it's just not going to happen. Oh, it might, and then it's going to fall apart. There's no foundation. You know, as I was growing up, 
We learn these stories in the Bible, 66 different books about wealth. One of them says this, the wise man built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. And then the waves came washing and it washed the sand away, the house that was built on the sand. But the wise man who built this upon the rock, the foundation. Here's another one for you. Biblically, we get this sometimes because our, our society, our culture has been insensitive for a while. This is the man is the head of the household. Yes, he is. This, he's the head. But the original word, the context, we take things out of context sometimes. The original word was taken out of context. And the content got lost in translation. The original context and content was in Hebrew. And the word head in Hebrew is translated foundation. So the man is the foundation of the relationship. So here's another twist on it. If the, literally, if the man is the head, yeah, I'm the head, I'm the head. The woman then is the neck. She can direct the head wherever the heck it needs to go. For me, this is why I surround myself with a lot of women. Clue, <laughs> my good friend Robert Riepel wrote a book that says Success Left a Clue. Well, one of them, and this is where we mess things up before I jump into the information today, because the information, the context is easy. The context is important. The content is easy. Most people miss this part too. Adam and Eve, we're going way back. Some of you guys are like, Dr. Oh, we talk, yes, we're talking a little bit about, but you got to understand from the beginning where it all stemmed, where, where we made the mistake. Adam didn't take responsibility. He gave it up. He blamed the woman. He was responsible for her. He's the foundation. And the good Lord said, for a man like this, what was the man like this? A man who actually shows up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time doing his job. At the time, it was naming all the animals. He says, it's not good for this man to be alone. So he put him into a deep sleep. That's like surgery, a coma. Took a left rib out and created Eve, which means beginning. She was the first. If you look scientifically right now, every man has one more rib on the right side than he does on the left side. That's God. That's genetically engineered to each and every one of us. And all women got their even ones too. Even on left, even on the right. That was another signal. Like, you know, artists on paintings, they leave their signature. That was one of God's signatures. Just, you know, okay. Anyways, he said she is his helpmate. Came out of the rib means she's side by side to help. Not a slave, not a servant. Equal partner. Right? So that got lost in translation, and we think women are here to serve. Well, even if you do that, listen to the literal word. Look at the definition. To serve doesn't mean to slave. Serving is giving of your own free will, that which you desire to help. Huh, crazy. So whether she was to help or serve, it's still giving equal partner. And over years, different generations have changed that. So what's important in next level achievement is for us to have the right contextual way of understanding and the right mindset. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. <laughs> Woo! I'm so excited. That's what we're going to talk about. So finishing that definition, Karen, I know you want it. You're going, okay, what is the definition? So show up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time with desire and faith. Desire is what keeps you up late at night. Faith is what keeps you going when you can't see that which is what you're looking to hold on to. Because sight is a function of the eyes. Vision, then, is a function of the heart. And I'll show you how all this ties in in the content very soon. So we have to then understand, if you show up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time, you have desire and faith, and you're willing to pay the price, that's good. You're willing to make the sacrifice. Look, every woman who chooses to be a mother, whether it's the day it happens or the nine months before, here's what she has to understand. And I'm just going to get a little raw for a second. If that's okay, well, sorry. If it's not okay, you're on. You're going to hear it. And if you're live, that's okay. 
I've never trained this information to the public before. So the first thing you see in Dr. Ungo, like, oh my God, did he say that? Yes, he did. And I'm going to say it again. So every woman who commits to being a mother, she has to show up consistently. Well, we know what happens for her to be a mother. So we're not going to spend too much time on that part, which is my favorite topic, which is sex, but it's okay. A couple of rounds of practice, then she gets pregnant, but she's committing to that one day of pain. And she has to show up consistently with a good attitude every single day with the morning sickness, with all this other stuff, so on and so forth. For every woman in the world, except for my wife, that's what happened. I have to show up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time with desire and faith, willing to pay the price. You know why? Because the moment she got pregnant, I got morning sickness. Yep, I was the one with the morning sickness. We were just looking at a picture two days ago and laughing. I put on 57 pounds when she got pregnant with Miracle. I was carrying my own kid. My face looked like I was a frog, swelled up. I guess it's because I really understood the emotional side of it, the EQ. I was such a supportive husband. My wife will tell you she has had the best pregnancy in the world. No pain, nothing. And when we got into the hospital, like that one moment, the doctor, you know, always gives the women the break. There's some women who want to feel the pain and some women who have an epidural. My wife says, I'll take the epidural. I just want to feel the pain for a little bit. And we went there, she was in labor like six hours and, and uh, about five of those hours, she had an epidural. She felt the pain a little bit. She goes, hey doc, I feel the pain, I want the epidural now. The doc's like, you can wait. She's like, no, I want it now. I'm a woman, I felt the pain, I'm good. My wife, she's like, I ain't playing. Right, she was not playing. Every woman shows up at least for those nine months or if you have a premature baby, my wife, by the way, was a premature. She always wanted stuff her way when she wanted it. So she showed up at six months, right? But you show up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time with desire and faith. You want to pay the price. Now, here's the key part. Find others who want to pay the price with you. Napoleon Hill wrote about it in his book called A Mastermind. Each of you on the Zoom today, you're finding it in you paying the price and finding others. Create a mastermind. Why? So we could cry, complain, and moan to each other and understand. Because no one else who's not on the same journey will never get it. You guys getting this? They will never get it. So you got to bitch moan and complain to the people who's going through the same stuff with you. Here's a reason for the Marines why we stick together so, so much. I mean, it's the hardest training ever. And for us, we all have two mothers. Mother number one from Paris Island, South Carolina. Mother number two, MCRD San Diego. We talk crap about each other, but we defend each other when anyone talks crap about the Marines. Right? It's crazy. That has to do the same thing. The same group of people you're working with to have success, you'll defend them. But you'll talk crap amongst each other. <laughs> it's natural. Right? So in your journey, to, 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 when you show up, consistently with a good attitude, over a long period of time, you're willing to pay the price, find others to pay the price with you, eventually success will take its place. Well, in order for success to happen, break the word in two. The first half meaning suck, which means it's the process by which you continue to grow, the achievement process. Some of it's gonna suck. Nothing worthwhile having should come easy anyways. For every mother who goes through childbirth, she knows at one point, doesn't matter, God created that, that anatomy that way, the average child is about, you know, head size, about four to six inches wide, 16 to 17 inches long, and a few pounds. And that woman's anatomy will adjust. I don't care who you are as a man, thinking how big and bad you are, you know, with us men, it's whoa, that will humble you. But then she readjusts after that too. That is life, that is success. Somebody's already going like, did he just say that? Yes, he did. But that's just the facts of life. That's how it is. So that's the context of today's information. And now in the second half hour, we're going to talk about the content. Does that, does that help anybody? If that helped you, if you got a little understanding, raise your hand, right? Go there, okay, cool, 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 all right. Same thing with business. If you're on Facebook, just drop learned, 
hashtag learn something. If you're on here too, I'd like to see the messages. Just put learn something, right? So what I'm gonna do is, is go through a little bit so you guys understand the, this information I'm gonna share with you. Thank you so much. Here, and I'm gonna go to share screen again because before we had to share a screen because someone was just all up and crazy. I put a little PowerPoint together for you guys so you can actually like, you know, learn something. And this is coming from my, my Wealth is Power tour that we were doing on the Outcomes and Breakthrough Mastermind. The first thing you wanna understand is this. What is the automatic negative thoughts? Ants. The ants, what, is, what does the ants have to do with anything? So let me tell you about the ants. What happens with the ants is this. The moment, when please, everybody, you can, you can say the moment, when? I'm gonna try it again. You can say, think of myself, the moment, when please? The moment. The moment. Thank you, I see lips moving. The moment. The, the moment. moment. Thank you all so much, the moment. And then you can hashtag, if you're on Facebook, just hashtag the moment. The moment you decide to do anything good, accomplish any goal, date any guy, date any girl, make any money, do whatever. The moment you decide to do something positive that is outside of your comfort zone, the ants show up in your life. Those are the automatic negative thoughts. What if he says no? What if she says no? What if this doesn't work? What if it's a scam? What if I don't make it? You know why? Because the world, write this down, 87% of the world is negative. And so many of us want it to be positive. It's great. Go get it. 87% is negative. Here's a, here's a cool part. 10% is neutral. 10% <laughs> is neutral. So either way, it doesn't matter. You know what that is? That 10% is called the universe. 87% of what's in the world is negative. 10% of what's make up of the world is the universe, otherwise known as the construct or the ether. 3% is positive because positivity is a choice. So you have the moment you're thinking about something, it's a neutral space. Whatever you decide will happen. But how's that gonna happen? Remember the definition of success? You gotta show up consistently Oops, but a good attitude. So you have to practice killing those little ants. Now, here's the thing about ants. If you know anything about ants, ants, I read this book when I was younger called Linogen and the Ants. How many of you guys ever read that book? Right, I'm dating myself here. If you haven't find it, it basically talks about, so there's this guy, Linogen, you trying to get these ants, and the ants, they floated on everything. Basically, the bottom line is this, ants, they go around, they go through, they go over, they go under, they go whatever. If an ant is on a mission, the ant will always accomplish the mission or it will die trying. And an ant lifts 20 times its size on its body, a leaf, which seems like nothing to you or I because we're giants compared to them. It's 20 times more than ant, but he'll pick it up and run it. And the only reason the ant does that is this. The simple difference between you and the ant is we have a choice. And we choose not to believe, but the ant choose to believe because it is run by the one thing that separates you and I from the ant. An ant or any other animal is ran by this. Write it down, instinct and the genetic code. We all as human beings have instinct and the genetic code running us too. But what makes this different is we have a choice. There's a 196 pound grandmother. This old lady, she ain't that, that is frail. And her granddaughter got trapped under a car, 2,700 pounds. She didn't think about it, moved the car, saved her granddaughter. No thought, simple choice, save the grandchild because she believed she could. 
The ant doesn't have a choice. It says, I need this instinct. Pick it up. Move it. Grandmother said, grandchild trap. Don't need it there. Pick it up. Move it. I mean, how many of you, I mean, Omar, raise your hand, Omar. I mean, right now, you know Granny did it. That's a big dude. Show him the guns, Omar. Show him the guns. Oh, snap. Look at that. A bad dude. But if I was to tell Omar right now, go outside and pick up a 2,700-pound car, see what I'm saying? Difference. Omar, how much do you love your mother? How much? Very much. Very, Very much. 2,700-pound car on your mother. You going to lift it up? Look at that. Change his mind. Yeah. Wouldn't even think about it. Success is the same way. We limit ourselves compared to other people. Well, he started first, or she started first, or they're so far ahead. Who gives a ratty patootie? It's a finish line. Just get there. When you get there, you still win. Does this make sense? Well, you know, in business, if it's making sense, it's say it makes dollars, baby. Cha-ching, cha-ching. If it does, it really does. So what you have to understand is this. When the ants show up, you have a choice to choose positive. Not saying that all the craziness doesn't exist, because it does. Fact of the matter is how you choose to deal with it. I see, see a lot of the popular things because it sounds good. Hey, life is 10% of what happened to you and 90% of how you respond. Bullshit, it's not. Did he say that? Yes, he did, because your brain needs to get that fact. Think about it this way. If life is 10% of what happened to you, then you spend 90% of your life responding. Then it makes you responsive. You're not proactive. Every successful man or woman is a proactive living being. They choose to be that way. People tell me, oh, you're lucky. Well, here's what I found out. The harder I worked, the luckier I got. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm getting really lucky today because I've been working hard every day. Like Vinny said in his introduction, I've got more education than some people know. So let, let me let me kind of share with you guys just uh, you know, just a, just a little bit. I want to see you lit wiggle lit. Who am I? I mean, it's kind of late into it, but I'm just gonna share with you guys, right? For those who don't know, this is how lucky I, I, I am. I spend a lot of my time. 20 years in the military. So like, how did you find the time to go to school while you were in the military? Now, let me take this down for a second. Here's how I find the time to go to school while I was in the military. I was on the infantry side of the house. I spent a great deal of my time on ships deploying into different places, six months at a time. You're bored. There's three things you can do when you're on the ship. You can become a womanizer. You can gamble or, you know, study, do whatever. So I played a lot of card games. I learned all kinds of Euchre, poker, not so much. I don't really like it. Spades, played a lot of that. But then I studied. Six months on the ship. 12 years in the, in, in the infantry side. Six months. That's six years of studying. And you're studying one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> you move so much faster. And the military had this program called the SOCMAR, Staffs of Forces, you know, agreement where they have an agreement with different colleges. And all that is when I was going for my doctorates, someone with a doctorate or higher was able to proctor the information to me. Military pays for that. And they paid for 75% of the education. Well, if you maintain that an A average or higher, they paid for 95% or more. All I had to pay for like, was like books. So the clause was, if you're a nerd, free education. Sign me up. I'll be a nerd. Because I don't really drink that much. I didn't drink back then at all. I mean, now, every now and then, if, I, if you like me and you want to give me something to drink, Bailey's is my thing, just so you know. For those who do. Like, I'll, I'll take Bailey's any day and Dom Perignon. That's, those are my two favorite things, right? Because, you know, I need something bubbly for my wife. We got to get along. Right? But that's the only thing I drink, Bailey's, baby. Whew, any kind of cream liqueur, I'll, I'll, I'll fall to back, but Bailey's is king because it tastes real good with ice cream. It's the dessert. <laughs> oh, I look at it, right? Anyways, 
So I didn't drink, I didn't womanize, I studied and I worked out. So that's guns of Navarone, right? But back in those days, I ate anything I wanted, but because I worked out three to four times a day, I le look, I learned, surround yourself with the people who are better than you in the areas you wanna be. Something Fasana said to me uh, almost a year ago, you can't outwork a bad diet. And I was like, oh, no wonder after I retired, I got fat. <laughs> oh. So let's go back a little bit to Dr. O. <laughs> so who am I? Right? I'm the founder of seven multi-million dollar companies. The eighth one is, is almost there. I've built some of the fastest growing companies in the world, billion dollar companies. I've worked, well, look, I'm not gonna read through that stuff. Here, here's, here's a summarization of it. I've helped some of the largest industry household name companies in the world, like Walmart stores, Jaffa Cosmetics, Night Media, Colgate, Chevron Oil, right? Walgreens, and so many others. These are billion dollar brands, teaching them the same philosophy. And in the last 20 minutes that I'm gonna teach you guys. <laughs> Crazy, okay, all right, okay. So let's jump into it a little bit. Can you guys do me a favor? Just have some fun and say little bit, just a little bit. Hey, little bit, just a little bit. Now here's the deal. If you don't have fun when you're learning, listen to this. Fun backwards is called, well, no, you know, F-U-N, N-U-F. You don't want to be enough. You want to have fun in your life. Just, let's have some fun, right? If you put an E to that, then you're enough. And if you're faith-driven like I am, in the book of John, John 10, 10 says, I am come to give you life so that you can live it abundantly. Not enough, because if you just have enough, then you'll, you'll, have, you'll have an enough life, you'll eat enough, you'll drink enough, you'll earn enough. Enough to do what? To get by? No. To just earn a living? No. To make a difference, right? So here's what I want you to understand. The ants will show up, 87% of it will show up naturally. You don't even have to solicit it, it comes to you. So knowing that, here's what I want you to know though. We, as human beings, are born with only two fears. Only two, only two. So everybody say this, two, only two. We're born with two fears. Now, I'm gonna call on, on a student. Star student, my CEO. And if, if she cannot embarrass me today, but I know she already knows, it runs out the tip of her tongue. We're only born with two fears. What are those two fears we're born with, Fasana? Loud noises mm -hmm. and the fear of. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. So much pressure. Okay, so loud noises and the fear of falling. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, unless she, I think she was playing with me. She know that's what they, ooh, she, she's been, because I've been messing with her all week. I got you. I was about to pre and be like, you know what? No CEO's ever been fired publicly, but you're about to go down. <laughs> she's messing with me. That's good. We love to have fun. So we're born with only two fears, ladies and gentlemen, the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Everything else are the fears that we're taught. And I'm going to share this with you. Here are the six basic fears that we're taught as a society globally throughout the world. These six basic fears are this, number one, poverty. No one wants to be broke. This is why all of us go to work. This is why a lot of us start businesses. This is why we want to achieve. This is why we want to succeed. We want to gain more so we don't end up impoverished. But here's the deal. Poverty and wealth is nothing more than a mindset. Write that down. Or hashtag mindset in the comments right now. If you're on Facebook, hashtag mindset. Drop it in the comments. Mindset. Mindset is everything because here's the, the deal. What you know, everything is this. What you know influences what you say. What you say influences what you see. What you see influences what you do. And what you do influences your results and results repeated over time creates your lifestyle. So if you put that together back with showing up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time, desire and faith, be willing to pay the price, find on the piece of the price with you and success will happen. If it's poverty based, then you, your life will end up in poverty. 
and you'll show up with an impoverished mindset. If you choose wealth, then you become wealthy. The way to not give in to number one is not to not be poor, it's to focus on being wealthy. Fulfilling the scripture, John 10, 10, I am come to give you life so you live it abundantly. And it means from the sweat of your brow when you eat bread, that's in Genesis. It means you gotta go to work and do, you gotta do the work. Rihanna came up with a song, you know, we have to work, 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 work. You have to work to make it happen. The second is old age. We're afraid of old age. Like, look, getting old is part of the process. Getting wisdom is part of it. Getting those lines shows you how much it is. But look, I respected the fear of old age so much so that I built a network marketing company business in the anti-aging skincare. Look, my age don't show and I don't care. I'm metrosexually well and humble with that because I still use anti-aging products to make this look good. Okay, I don't want anybody to know my age. It's okay. I respect that fact. I ain't afraid to say it. I built a multi-million dollar business because I understood that fear. Beauty, you women on here, you know it. Sometimes y'all up in there. Look, in that industry, I learned, you don't just, I used to just wipe stuff on my eye. No, you take the most sensitive finger. That's this one here. Put the stuff on there and get, I learned that while I was in the industry. You ladies gonna like, yep, Dr. O got his, got his groove on. Yes, I know what's up. Okay, y'all don't, don't leave me out alone. I actually had to teach my wife. She's a tomboy. Right? She ran track. That's what she did. So understanding that fear, the beauty space is one of the largest spaces in the world. You walk out of any store, there's always lipstick, makeup, eyeliner, something on there. Beauty. Right? It's the one of the largest spaces because they understand that fear. The third is criticism. Raise your hand if you like being criticized. Yep, nobody. I'm not even gonna go into that one. Loss of a loved one, no one wanna lose anybody, especially now in COVID-19. Ill health, nobody likes being sick. That's why we're all home, social distancing. Who wants to be sick? Nobody. No, Keith Sweat made a song, nobody. Yeah, if y'all remember that, that's back in the days, bump and grind right there. Anyways, number six is death. I've experienced all of these. I flatline died four times, three times in Iraq. One time I ran myself to death in Hawaii in 2002. It was too hot. I didn't climatize well. My temperature was 107.6. Some people tell me, I don't believe that's okay. I'll send you a screenshot of the, the medical record <laughs> there. I lived through that. That same year, for those of you who remember, there was a football player who died from 105.2. Here's what happened. Four times I tried to go home to heaven and God's like, I'm not ready for you yet. Get your ball self down there and teach the message. That's a piece of what I'm doing right now. That's what I'm doing. So you might ask, like these six basic fears, that's what most businesses, they understand and they get that. How do you avoid it? Well, you don't, you don't avoid it. What you do is you focus in the direction you wanna go. Write this word down, focus, F-O-C-U-S. The reason why most people fail is because they fail to focus correctly. Focus stands for follow one course until successful. So if your path is wealth, why focus on being broke, while well, focus on the debt, while well, focus on the credit card bills. I'm not saying avoid it. Set up a debt repayment process, even if it's $50 a month, and work on building generating wealth. If you want to get a kiss from the girl or the guy, focus on their lips and what it's going to feel like instead of the slap you might get if you just go over and do it. But if you want to do it like Don Juan, a little then Jenna Sequa, and you go over like, hey, girl, how you doing? Now, that's, that's what the guys are going to tell you because they don't know anything about it. Right, look, I'm gonna role play with someone, pick anybody randomly. Let's just do it for real. Check this out. I'm gonna pick anybody, any any woman, any girl. So show my hands on the screen if you'd like to role play for a second. Any of the ladies? Anybody? Ladies? Okay, great. Annie. Also, all right. So here we go, everybody. We're up in the bar and I walk over to Annie. Right? And Annie, I want you to just share honestly how you would respond. Let me show some of you guys. Check, check out, check out my game, check out my game. So man number one. Walk over. First off, I wouldn't be sitting in the bar. <laughs> Where would you be sitting, Annie? So let's go, let's go to your sophisticated point. I would be at a table. Because a bar means a pickup spot. A, a table spot. is classy. Okay. Nope. Table, oh. not, right? no Just, problem. 
So Saw my, me table, sitting is, out there. my All right. table is right next to yours. <laughs> okay. Right? Guy number one. You come here often? I know. What's up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll see a lot of me in your life. <laughs> That's cool. Are you looking at a mirror? Uh, look, these are look, some of the crazy pickup lines that are there. <laughs> I, I can go into a whole bunch of them. I go through Romeo requests every day. Let's get it on, right? me. <laughs> so if I'm there, I'm just going to have a conversation with Annie. Just, just get, like if I was sitting there next to her and we're waiting on our meal and she's smiling, first thing I'm going to start with a compliment. Then I'm going to say, oh, nice shoes. Thanks. I like yours, too. Appreciate it. So what do you do? Look, oh, look, I said nothing. I said nothing. <laughs> I know, because I usually take the lead, because if I like the guy, then I talk. If I don't, I walk away. <laughs> right? Let me tell you what just happened. When I said nice shoes, 95% of women put a lot of effort in their shoes. If you as a man, I'm giving y'all some game right now. If you as a man will pay attention to that little thing she spent most of her time worrying about, three of them, hair, shoes, makeup. Stop complimenting her and her dress or her breasts or looking at her breasts when you talk to her. But all I need to do is start a conversation. She's already taken lead. Now, we're gonna continue this conversation for another 30 seconds. She asked me what I do. I help entrepreneurs succeed with their wildest dreams. Oh my gosh, that's so cool because that's exactly what I do. So what exactly do you do? You know what, let, let me do this before I answer that question. Do you mind if I just come over and sit with your table? Yeah, sure, did you eat? Okay, before I go any further, do y'all see how that happened? It's easy. Speak to her interest because we're gonna have a stimulating conversation. Man, men, some more to put you on point with game here. If my goal is to date her, stop worrying about everything else. Get into her head. A woman already decide if she's going to go home with you or not. Are you going to marry her or not? 99% of the times, a woman has already decided for a guy if he's the one or not. He's got about a few days. If he said a few words and keep his mouth shut, that he can get in. But no, typically this, mm, you show up with a bad attitude, not a good one. So Annie and I are sitting at the same table, and now we can have a conversation. And I want nothing to do with her, even though I want to date her. I have nothing to do with her. But we're going to have a good conversation, have a good meal. Now, let's say we had a great conversation, it got done, just finished eating. Annie, mm -hmm. such a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it was really nice. I'm really like surprised at how quickly we connected. It was. I know, was like you had me at hello at the heart level. It's like I connect with so many people here, but we connected here. Yeah, it was true. You know, it was. I guess it was like what you said to me, and you actually just asked me what I did, and and that was important. And yeah, you're you're a really nice guy. You're pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And listen, I have to run. I know you probably got to go too because we're both busy. Are you open to staying in touch? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, are you on Facebook? Because that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I, I can check that out. Okay, awesome. Man, if you aren't peeping the game, you better learn. Don't ask for nothing. Just ask if they're open. You know why? Because here's the deal. No one likes to be sold, but we all like to buy, which means that we all like to be in control. And if I ask if she's open to co connecting, she's in control. If she says no, I had a great conversation. But if I ask and give her the authority, the permission in a sense, well, she's going like, well, that's different. Hello. Yeah. If you had asked me for my phone number, I would have shut it down and I would have been, okay, this is a creep, right? Because I'm not ready to give my number yet. But you asked me in an open uh, way so that I was comfortable enough to share what I felt comfortable sharing. Thank you, Annie. So for the guys that are out there, this wasn't a dating show, but I just put you on game today just so you all know, okay? Put y'all on game. So, what does all that have to do with achievement? The process is nothing if you're willing to do the work. I'm willing to do the work, have the conversation that was easy to flow and go and have more conversations towards that end result. Find other people around you that like you. Instead of inviting her on a date next time, invite her out to a group event so she could see some of your friends. <laughs> Woo! Guys, don't know. Look, man. Look. 
All right, leave you alone. Let's, let's, let's carry on with the information. So knowing that these are the six basic fears, this is how you conquer them. I'm going to give you a chance to write this down, screenshot, do whatever you have to do. Because every single one of us, I'm going to go through these real fast so you can get it. We close out here today and now we're already up. Every one of us are born with these five essential mental skills. And it goes hand in hand with my message today. Number one is goal setting. And in the psychology world, we call that teleological. There's my 50 cent word for the day. It means to seek, to find. So when you think about it, if you are then wired to find something, then you should be good at setting goals. Anybody agree with that? If God put a compass in your head, it has to point to north. Well, you have to choose your north. That's setting your goal. When you choose your north, then you visualize it. That's number two. Well, what does north look like? What does my end goal look like? What do I need $3 trillion for? Build my own country. Put my people on there. 3,400 homes. Water, trash, food, all that. Done. What does it look like? Very clear. It means, number two, you go into your forethought. Forethought means this, thinking forward. We're the only ones that don't just have instinct and a genetic code. We have a choice to choose how we visualize the goal of the future it is we're looking for. Once you have that clear in your mind, it goes into number three, which is called energy management. You release enough energy in your body to be able to then show up consistently with a good attitude over a long period of time with desire and faith, find enough people to help you build that community and that goal, whatever it is. Because if you do it by yourself, success, you could suck by yourself. You can find a group of people to suck with and embrace it and talk to and understand and grow together. If you want to be successful, go by yourself. If you want to achieve, find a group. Go together. If you want to annoy someone, poke them with a finger. If you want to knock them out, make a fist. Finger to fist method. You're more effective with more than you are with less. Number four, you have to think about it. Okay, great. Spend more of your time thinking effectively. It's effective thinking, which is going to attribute to your end result. Spend more of your time thinking about the end result and not how to get to it. Put it this way, Abraham Lincoln was given a question. He says, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I would spend four hours sharpening my ax. <laughs> Woo! Effective thinking, visualizing, clarifying. And the last part is mental toughness. Why? You have to be resilient. You call it stick it to it, stick it to itiveness, stick it togetherness, whatever you want to call it, the sticky factor, mental toughness is resiliency because you got to be resilient just like the ants why because the moment when again the moment you decide to go forward the ants will show up if i wanted to talk to annie and then sit in my table next to hers the moment i thought about it it's like what if she says no well what if she's waiting on a guy what if what if what if what if, what if never entered the arena because it was standing outside the door going what if i lose too bad <laughs> hope you guys are getting this so as we come to the last few minutes here hunkering down hope you learned something if you learned something today just put value in the comments whether it's on facebook or not when you've mastered these five essential mental skills understand this last piece and this is very key and important for you for for everyone to get that there's three dimensions by which we think and that's in words pictures and emotions what we say influences what we see, and what we see influences how we feel, and how we feel with repetitive action gives us a result. So with that in mind, I'm gonna do another talk. And this other talk is gonna be on what I call my chaos module. I'm gonna teach this in depth for you guys sometime next week, right? I'm gonna teach the chaos module. Because when the ants show up, that's what happens in your life. Chaos happens. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I hope you've enjoyed your power hour. I know I came to you like a flood bucket of just information. 
But the thing is this, all of this stuff is just sitting in my head. When people tell me I'm lucky, no, here's how I got lucky. I study, practice, and then I teach. Because when I study, I learn. When I practice, I accomplish. And what I teach is what I have learned from studying and accomplishing. I hope this has been inspirational, informational, and transformational enough for you. Because information is just what you listen to. Transformation is what happens if you apply the information you receive. So with that being said, it is 159. And I don't know, some of you guys have ever seen the, the movie with Medea, right? And the, I forgot which one it was. It was like Medea family wedding or stuff. There's a little one character, the girl, and it's like, I sound like a siren, you're so crazy, right? So I had a little moment of that, a little bit of the confusion, but I'm gonna give you guys an extra minute and a half because we have the chaos module in the beginning. Here's what I wanna share with you. If this information has truly touched you, you're on Facebook or here, the recording is gonna be available soon. You can reach out to the person invited you if you're joining us for the first time. Love to get this information back to you in, in their hands. All right? One of my greatest goals in order to get to three trillion people was being able to put my information on a platform. This was basically just the first 10 pages of the first chapter of my book. That is a course, and that entire course is on a platform. That, that today's the day book. Thank you, Annie. That entire course is on a platform. The average person who invests in that course, when it's 75% off, is $5,000. You can get the access to that entire course on a platform that goes live June 5th for only 99 bucks. And you can have me in your pocket whenever you need, whatever the platform is, you can learn on it. But today, I just wanted to come from the heart and give back. Because I've, I've never taught this information publicly. This is information that's moved some of the largest companies in the world, billion dollar companies like Walmart, Storage, Jaffa, and the rest of them I shared earlier. That's why they hire me. Thank God none of them has fired me. <laughs> I guess they must have loved my crazy. But last thing I want to say is if you got value out of this today, consider yourself fortunate for the person who invited you. I just wanted to be able to share. I'm going to share the chaos module and how th this piece ties into it. I don't know when, probably sometime next week, because we have another powerhouse on the power hour tomorrow to be sharing with you. And whew, you guys don't want to miss it. But I had a blast. Thank you all so much for being on today. If you're live on Facebook, just Hashtag value if you got some value out of it. Well, this would be the hashtag. Hashtag value if you got some value. Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate your love. Appreciate your gratitude. Let's go out and make it an amazing day. Tag this video or share it on the timeline with someone else or share the recording when it comes out for those of you who are here with someone else. But with that, I enjoyed spending time with you today. I love you all. God bless. We'll see you back tomorrow at 1 p.m. on the Hour of Power. Bye for now, everybody.